<clears throat> the following interview was conducted with Betty Nelson, Dean of Students Emerita uh, for the Pre-University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, August 18, 2010 at her residence in West Lafayette. This is a part two, and the focus is being conducted, the interview is being conducted with the focus, the christening of the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Dorothy C. Stratton in Pascalua, Mississippi, July 23rd, 2010. Welcome, Betty, and good afternoon, and thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Okay. It's always nice to talk about one of my mentors. <laughs> uh, let's tell how we got the invitation, and then the travel, and the event, and the pre-event, and spires. I suspect some of us don't know exactly how we got on an invitation list, but um, we had... I had an email contact from a Coast Guard with the title of event planner, or I can go back and fill in the blank on that. Yeah. But anyway, she communicated with me about and asked who in West Lafayette related to Purdue should appropriately be invited to this event. So I sent her back an email with the, uh, Sally Watlington's name, of course, and a number of people at the university who had, um, had known Dorothy, known about her uh, names, addresses, uh, phone numbers, email addresses, etc. So that was the start for me, and that occurred probably January or February of this year. And there were several communiques after that um, with both this woman with the Coast Guard and then with someone at Northrop Grumman. Okay. So subsequently then, uh, in, in, a little less than a month before the christening itself, an invitation did come. It, and these, the invitations for this event were numbered the envelope was numbered, and the invitation itself is numbered. And apparently that occurs whenever there is, um, there is some Secret Service uh, activity that's going to be related to the event. Okay. And then uh, tell us about getting down. You flew down, you and your husband. No, we drove. drove. Oh. Uh, we thought... We'd have more fun if we drove, since flying is a little bit difficult these days. And uh, flying in is not easy. The, the airport is not in Pascagoula. Uh, one has to fly into New Orleans or uh, Biloxi and find transportation from there. So we drove. There were two vans from Lafayette that made the trip. Um, Sally Watlington drove her van, and Dick Nelson and I were in that one. The other van had Grace Lechtenberg, Linda Sorensen, Mary Sadowski, and Mary Reese. And all, uh, all of us had either had contact directly with Dorothy or with some organization that had been near and dear to Dorothy's heart. Uh, Mary Reese, for example, who was a vi retired vice president from State Farm, had been the president of the board for the local Girl Scout unit. And as you will recall, Dorothy had been the executive director for the Girl Scouts of the USA at one time. So um, Mary had certainly was being in support of that activity of of Dorothy's. So two days down, we the two vans, um, we left from Dog and Suds early <laughs> on a Tuesday morning and um, there was a walkie-talkie in each van so that we could communicate with each other and we kept each van uh, kind of in sight uh, all the way down. We had one overnight in northern Alabama and then in uh, arrived in mid-afternoon on, on Wednesday, so about a little more than a day and a half of travel. Sure. Uh, the night 
that Wednesday when we arrived, we had prearranged to participate in the 87th birthday party for Betty Reed, one of the Coast Guards, one of the old Coast Guards who was flying in from Lafayette. Jane Boswell, who is a neighbor of Betty's and who is one of the neighborhood organizers in the the Highland Park, the South 9th Street Hill gang, Uh, Betty had arranged that a birthday cake would be delivered to Betty Reed's room at her motel. It was. We arrived there that evening for the party, prearranged, uh, as a surprise for Betty, uh, and we brought the champagne and the, the glasses and the plates and the napkins and all the accoutrements of, uh, of a celebration. And, you know, a rather rare event to celebrate an 87th birthday with one of Dorothy's former spars. And Betty, this was, it was dark outside. It was, it was late in the day. Betty had been traveling all day. She and her family had missed, they had um, a flight they were supposed to take had been canceled that morning, so they had to come in on a different flight. Um, Their luggage was lost, was not there. So it had been a pretty rigorous day for this old spar, but she kept great perspective and she enjoyed the party as much as anyone would have and we probably stayed far too late but we all had a wonderful time singing happy birthday to an old spar. The next, on Thursday morning, we were all up fairly early. We had not known... That's the day of the event. No, this is the day before. before. Okay. Um, On Thursday, the big event that day was a luncheon sponsored by Northrop Grumman and was um, the guests, primary guests were the spars and the, um, the, the senior leadership from Northrop Grumman. We had thought at one point that our group from Lafayette was going to be included in that luncheon so for that reason we made our travel plan so that we could be there. As it turned out Northrop Grumman decided they were not going to invite our group to come for that event and you know we certainly made lemonade out of the lemons and we just got in the van and went to New Orleans for the day so we had a grand time wandering through the French Quarter and we stopped at Café du Mundo and had thick wonderful coffee and beignets and we got powdered sugar all over us and the temperature was probably about 98 and the humidity was about 99 but you you go and you have a good time and and you get cool some other time so we wandered a little more after we had our treat and then we ended up at dinner uh, for dinner at Brennan's and we were a little early for dinner and we were treated like royalty we were early there, so we got the very best attention from their serving staff, and um, the the place has recently been um, kind of redecorated, restored since the, the New Orleans floods, and um, so it was a very pleasant evening. The wine was, was sweet, and the music was nice, and the, the chatter of people around us was at a perfect level, so we felt quite rewarded for our uh, being in New Orleans that day. So then back to the the hotel. Highways are good, interstates uh, worked very nicely uh, from Pascagoula to New Orleans and uh, didn't, you know, we were able to, to find our way down into the city and so it was a very pleasant experience. Uh, we, we took Dick and I took a little uh, city bus tour uh, into uh, the, that French Quarter and a little beyond into the Garden District, looked at old cemeteries and and drove very close to Drew Brees' home and considered that a, a special treat for boilermakers. 
the next day, Friday, was the day of the the christening. So we were up and dressed and ready to go fairly early. Sally was dressed in her navy uniform, her her summer whites, and looked just as spiffy as could be. And um, we were proud to proud to be with her. We were bussed to the parking area at the shipbuilding dock. A um, number of buses were lined up taking people there. Um, again, the organization left something to be desired. We weren't quite sure what lines we were to be in because after we got off the bus, then we needed to go through security check. Uh, they had the metal detectors and everybody went through. We were encouraged not to bring big bags and you know, we were giving, given some helpful instruction. But we'd been in line for too long and the, the Stratton family was there and um, they had small children, age of the children I think 7 to 11, something like that. And um, we finally got the attention of one of the the workers and encouraged him to let this group of Stratton supporters, family and extended family, to go through security and get into um, the... The, the area where the program was going to occur. And that finally happened, and, and uh, we're a little more comfortable after we got into the largest tent I've ever been in, and a tent that was open onto the dock, and air conditioners were running full force. So we were in... Mississippi hit heat and humidity in a tent that was open with air conditioning. It was a remarkable experience for somebody who thinks you're supposed to be efficient and economical and hoard your resources a little bit, but it certainly made it a comfortable event. Oh, um, chairs in probably five, about five rows were a, there was a name on each chair. So we were ushered to the chairs that had our names on them. And we were there probably a, a half hour or so before a program began. During that time, the Coast Guard band was playing out on the, the dock under a smaller tent. And there were, there was a, I don't know, one or two black vocal groups performing. And it, there was vigorous music. Sure. It was sprightly. Um, so there was no dozing during this, this time we were, were waiting. Great fun to watch the crowd gather. Um, the fellow at the end of our row uh, stopped and visited with him and asked what, what he did, what his relationship was to this event. He said that he is the Mr. Goodwrench of, on the construction site. He's the one they come and see when anything needs to be fixed, and he sees that it gets done. He said there's 1,700 vendors working to supply this one job. So said there's plenty of opportunity for things to need um, a attention. Little, yes, attention and some grease. So I enjoyed visiting with with him. Our group had two folks in military attire. Um, Sally Watlington was there as um, retired navy ca uh, navy captain, and the second. One was the Purdue student, the woman student in NROTC, who has um, received the Stratton Scholarship for the second year. 
and Laura is a charming young woman. Um, she was just a real asset to this event and thought it was that Dorothy would be very, very pleased to know that we had with us a young woman who is being nurtured and mentored and brought along in a military career. Laura has been on summer cruise this summer and she was allowed to leave the cruise a little early, which is not an easy thing to arrange, but being uh, included in the christening of the Stratton uh, was worth a number of points to get off cruise a little early. Um, so she she joined the group and she had an opportunity to make connections with some of the 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 ranking military folk in the Navy and the Coast Guard and hope that this this gives her an opportunity to be part of a of a broader network sure. as her career unfolds. The people who were seated directly in front of the Dias um, included the old spars who were in attendance and there were we were told there were about two dozen and that that estimate looked about right for um, the group we could see all in their 80s and 90s um, there were a couple in wheelchairs it was clear that any spar who had any way of getting to this event came. From talking with some of the spars in the hotel lobby, it's very clear that, that, that there's a, a spirit of camaraderie in this group that continues uh, 60 years mm -hmm. after they served together. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they served in a unique fashion. They know that they made a difference and uh, um, I think there are life stories in that group that we we would like to hear. the The group was asked it was acknowledged twice from from the the lectern by the speakers, and you know, they it was most appropriate right. for them to to receive this kind of attention. I talked with one of the spars and. I don't know what her title, what her rank was, but it certainly wasn't very high. She said she only saw Dorothy once. She said they knew she was coming on the ship that day. And she said, I was bent over polishing the railing, and I looked over, and there beside me I could see a sleeve with a lot of stripes on it. <laughs> and I, I knew that must be Dorothy Stratton. So that was her only encounter with, with Dorothy, but that was enough for her to feel like they were colleagues and that Dorothy Stratton cared about her. My guess is almost every woman who was there um, had a, a similar story sure. to tell. Those who could came in their old World War II spar uniform and they they looked a little a little worn, a little uh, shabby at this point, but um, but the, this attitude of pride that filled each one of those more than compensated for sure. having a historic garment on. During this time we were waiting, the Coast Guard band played. They too were in their light blue shirts and what appeared to be wool pants. This is the Coast Guard band? The Coast Guard band. Uh -huh. um, the, as we got nearer the time for the program itself to begin, the, the color guard came out and stood on the dock to the left of the, the platform and 
They were absolutely motionless there, standing mostly in the sun, and I talked with the lead fellow later, and he said, indeed, those are wool uniforms. And he had thought when he served as color guard in Washington, D.C., that he'd been hot, but he thought today topped that. But nonetheless, they did exactly what they were supposed to do, and they did it with precision. Um, really quite, quite a moving scene. The platform party came onto the came onto the stage, and included the representatives from Northrop Grumman, the spokeswoman from Northrop Grumman, and the CEO, and. Um, Janet Politano, who's the Secretary for Homeland Security, to who ha to whom the Coast Guard have significant responsibility at this point. Um, the the wife of the Governor of Mississippi was there. It was um it was a first class platform party. Yeah, yeah. The last person to be introduced and to come on to the dais was uh, the uh, First Lady, Michelle Obama. And I have to say, I just was enormously impressed by her. She has a kind of classic quality that is similar to Jackie Onassis. She's statuesque. Um, has a kind of um, grace, and understated style that's very attractive. I think, by contrast with Jackie Onassis, however, she's warmer, a little more effusive, a little more intimate in how she comes across. She could be funny appropriately. Um, but her her presentation was, I thought, very well done and well delivered, and she could not have been more complimentary of the spars who were there. Mrs. Obama spoke about the qualities Dorothy exemplified, what she had done to move along the role of women, and noted also that the spars are also part of the greatest generation. I think so often when I hear that, I hear it being applied only to groups of men who served. And this was the first time I had heard mm -hmm. that term applied to mm -hmm. women who were in the service. Uh, we, She ended her comments and she and the Northrop Grumman person um, went over to the ship. The bottle of champagne was positioned there and was wrapped in some some kind of garment, um, a decorative something. But I think it had a, I think it had a, a, a more important safety feature. Um, um, so there were a few little words exchanged between the two of them on the platform beside the, the bow of the ship, and then Mrs. Obama grabbed the bottle and gave it one great big whack, and stuff, champagne spewed all over the place, but I think this garment that was on the bottle captured the pieces of glass and kept us from having a, a major injury right. up there. Uh, I think Mrs. Reagan or one of the first ladies had christened a ship and it took two or three times for her to get the job done. Mrs. Obama clearly works out every day and she had the power to get that job done. In fact, she, as one often sees her, she was in a sleeveless dress. And I think it takes a special body for a woman to wear a sleeveless dress, arms are not the prettiest part of the body, 
but her if you've seen the picture of that that christening you can see these wonderfully formed muscles through there so she talks about good health appropriate nutrition appropriate exercise and clearly she walks the talk at, uh, she's a just a great example the crowd was absolutely effusive about Mrs. Obama. They, the applause was vigorous, lengthy, and on two or three occasions they had the opportunity to acknowledge her with applause. Uh, she clearly was in an audience that was thrilled to see her and eager to hear what she had to say. The audience included a large number of professional appearing African Americans and I was in, and including some uh, African American children and I was just so pleased for them to see someone who is such a significant role model my guess is that in the deep south they don't have an opportunity like that every day and really important for people from the black community to have this yeah. this time uh, with a, a quintessential role model a timely comment made by Mrs. Obama was that my my family and I are coming back next month to vacation. I cannot tell you at this point where we're coming, but we will be back. And it was important for her to say that at that time because the oil spill from the deep water rig was on the minds of everybody in that part of, of the country and there was great concern about what was happening to those pristine beaches all along that area of the Gulf. So for Mrs. Obama to say, we're coming here, we're bringing the family, we're going to have a little mini vacation here on the Gulf was a, and she said, and we hope you all will come too. Um, an important endorsement right. for people in that area whose economy was right. so threatened at that time. Um, the the instructions from the platform had been that when the program ends, we hope you will stay seated until the platform party leaves. So an usher came, the platform party stood and was ready to um, move off the stage. An usher came and got the, the Stratton family, the real biological family, and took them out. So they got out of the um, this area where we were all seated ahead of the crowd, and they were taken by the Secret Service to a different location under the tent. And um, Mrs. Obama then spent about 30 minutes with the family um, before she came to the reception. And uh, about midway through that, um, the request was made that Sally Watlington be allowed to join them, to join the family and the First Lady. And I think Sally being in uniform and that Mrs. Obama had acknowledged Captain Watlington uh, in her comments to the group. Uh, she was a known quantity by the, the Secret Service and Sally and one of the Secret Service people had had eye contact throughout the uh, the event. So Sally went in and also had an opportunity um, with with the family. After... I'll have to ask her about that. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, we all went into a separate part of this building, uh, through the tent and into this building, and there was a reception uh, going on at that point, and there, were, there was a big display uh, on the wall with Dorothy and the ship, and um, people kind of milling around, visiting, getting food. There were food stations here and there. And after Mrs. Obama left the family, 
there was a smaller stage set up in the reception room and a crowd seemed to know what was going to happen over there and just had gone over and hadn't budged. They stayed up close to that stage and after a while Mrs. Obama came out and again had words for the crowd there and the little cell phone cameras were just everywhere. Um, so lots of people went home with uh, pictures of, of Mrs. Obama and that crowd. We decided it was about time for us to sure. get out of there that everything we were going to see had, we had seen. Uh, Coast Guard had um, a little shop set up along one wall and they were selling some memorabilia. You could get a, um, a golf shirt with the Stratton emblem on it and there were mugs and huggers and um, all kinds of little things that were commemorative of, sure. of the day. So people walked out with, with some, some Did you trophies. Did you buy anything? I didn't. You know, I'm at that stage in my life where I'm trying to get rid of things. And <laughs> I am too. <laughs> so oh. I didn't, but I can enjoy them just the same. Yeah. The, the spirit, Katie, coming out of that event was, was really like a love fest. People were just were so excited about what had happened. And I was, and could see the bus that we were trying to get to, and I was coming across this dusty parking lot, and um, a black woman, a beautifully dressed woman, whom I had seen in the reception area, and we just you know, had a little fun exchange. Well, I saw her again as we came across the parking lot, and she said, oh, um, I think it's just meant to be that I catch up with you again. I brought this mug to give to Mrs. Obama, and I just didn't get close enough to Mrs. Obama, so I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> okay. So this will be my my gift that you can carry home with you. And I have this, this, this mug with her coffee shop name on it, and, and it's... Oh, it's from her, her business or yes. something. Yes, oh. uh-huh. So I'm, I'm subbing. When I drink my coffee sometimes, <laughs> I'm subbing for Mrs. Obama. But there's just kind of that kind of that spirit life? of, yeah. you know, we're all feeling good about what has happened here, and um, women have had an opportunity to feel elevated, and, um, and the Coast Guard accepted uh, women of color, uh, I think one thing that come away from that, but the, particularly the ones that were there representing the ones who have since passed on, that one of our who our of our own who was a woman is even after she's passed is being recognized because yes. that is the first Coast Guard ship named after a woman, mm -hmm. and that I mean and everybody what you're saying get those threads from the people mm -hmm. that were there. Mm -hmm. I think and that folks, says it all. If folks understood this was right. And they Something were glad to be able to participate, and they knew that Dorothy was right there, too. Yes. You know, the interesting thing to me, Katie, is that Dorothy was really kind of a shy woman. And, you know, there, there are people of prominence who walk into a room, and all heads turn, and they kind of suck the air out of a room. You know, there's this kind of charisma that that pulsates from them. And you know, wow, this is X. Something, yeah. Well, Dorothy was a 180 from that. You know, she was efficient, kind of low pulse, you know, low vibrations from her. She just knew what needed to be done, the way in which it should be done, and the standard was high. And you know, it was just, it was a, it's a, a just a very different kind of personality that could succeed and establish what she did. What she did, right? And so, um, a corollary to that, it, it depends. It's also the times in which she was involved yes. with things. Uh, it's a little, and I think that's key, and I try to share that with people, 
when they say they'll talk about something in the 50s and oh, we don't do that today or something different you talk about it in that context yes and that's what you're saying yes that's a very good point point. Mm-hmm. and she it's like the women who joined the spars you know, they that maybe doesn't sound so extraordinary now you know now we have women in, in ROTC sure. and Air Force ROTC but a lot of just picked up and went and joined yeah. up yeah and there was not no advertising, no billboards or anything mm-hmm. like that, or anybody to really talk to. And when you look back and you wonder, just like Betty, how she happened to decide yes. this might be something I'd like to do. And it was extraordinary that oh, she yeah. did it. Right, by herself. You know, her mother, she went on her own. Her parents didn't drive her over to uh-huh. Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. And call and her on the phone every night. Right. And, and, and then take that long train down to Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And Dorothy... If she wasn't drafted, right. she had a good job here, significant responsibility. Right. She just decided it was her duty what she wanted to, do, to, right. to participate in this effort. Right. Yeah. Um, good good show. Good. That's really, that's nice.